please remember residency and your residency status is not a question of declaration. It's a question of legislation. So, and, and here, ignore your reserve bank rules for a, for a second. Okay. But from an income tax point of view, if SARS has me as resident and I disagree, I can go and say, no, hang on, I'm non-resident. And here's my application of fact as to why I'm non-resident and SARS has to accept it. Maybe only because a court eventually agrees with me. But the point is, there is absolutely nothing in our law which currently says you are non-resident or you are resident by virtue of your, the declaration made to SARS. The benefit of that is that there are definitely scenarios where we can use, the fa use our fact pattern to then make us be declared resident or non-resident, dependent on the scenario you want. But conversely, it also means that for every single year where I submit a tax return, my residency status is again a question of fact. And just because I was non-resident last year doesn't mean I'm, re I'm non-resident this year. If I've been non-resident for the last 15 years, I certainly agree with you that it's far more probable that I'll be non still be non-resident 15 years later than resident. But it doesn't mean that it's not a fact which is outside the scope of purview of SARS. In particular, and I've had this in a conversation with a couple of SARS, SARS officials, is to be brutally honest, historically, SARS didn't really scrutinize your residency status as carefully as they may have should have. So the fact that your return showed you as non-resident says nothing more than the fact that you ticked a box saying that you're non-resident. It didn't say that SARS agreed with you. You don't have a letter from SARS saying, we agree with the fact that you're non-resident, all you have is that you made a declaration. And quite frankly, even if you have a letter from SARS that you were non-resident two years ago, facts change which could make you resident today. Please just be sure that for someone who has left 15 years ago, I generally would recommend that for the years in which you take, change tax residency, keep that return and keep the fact pattern because it's worth it if there is ever a query raised. It is How do I phrase this? Lack of objection doesn't equal agreement. Okay. Follow up question Is a change to RAVA 1 only required for an individual taxpayer who has moved and living overseas for two years as an employee in the UK? Right. If you um, your the question as to whether you should be declaring yourself as resident or non-resident on the RAVO one is always going to come back to the question of whether you meet the definition of resident for income tax purposes. And our definition of resident for income tax purposes is you are ordinarily resident as defined under the Act. Or go read Interpretation Note three in case you want more detail. And failing which, I check physical presence. Okay. If I am non-resident or resident through both of those, there is a third criteria to our residency test, which says that if you are resident in another country through application of a double taxation agreement, then you, then you become non-resident for tax purposes only. 
So to go back to my UK example of where we have an individual who goes and works for two years in the UK, I could be resident in South Africa because my intent is to always come back, so I'm still ordinary resident. But I could also be resident in the UK because under UK law, you become tax resident after 183 days. The DTA then, for example, might make me resident in the UK only under the tiebreaker rules in Article 3. In that case, per the definition in the Income Tax Act, I'm no longer resident in South Africa and I'm resident in the UK only. So yes, it may be that even if you're only planning on leaving for two years, that you could become non-tax resident in South Africa. Okay.